All right, everyone, it's time for a Super Tuesday video. Of course, we can't give rock-solid predictions because Booty Judge just dropped out. Yes, the fourth-place challenger with, a, you know, nationwide a double-digit total decided it wasn't possible going forward. Bloomberg's still stubbornly in there. I don't think he's going to amount to much. So here's my predictions. First prediction, Sanders wins the big states. California and Texas. He's going to rack up the delegates there. Sanders is going to win Super Tuesday. The only caveat is this. Here's, here's number two point. If Biden overperforms by a significant enough margin because Booty Judge left, he was, he was favored to win two of the Super Tuesday states, North Carolina and Oklahoma. That doesn't really mean much. That would be, if Sanders wins everything else, Biden might as well drop out and just say, you know, he's gotten the nomination. We're socialists now. Fuck it. I don't think that'll happen, but then <laughs> that's what he should do in that case. The second point is that Booty Judge was averaging high enough so that if a large enough proportion of his fans back Biden, Biden will win at least four or five states on Super Tuesday. That would shock a lot of people because he's been behind in most of these states in the polls. In, de in the delegate count, of course, he'd still be behind. Maybe not insurmountably, but he'd be you know, considerably behind in the delegate totals. But he'd be viable. Most importantly, he'd be the only other viable person left in the field. Here's what happens if that occurs. Here, here are the two possibilities. First possibility is Sanders runs away with it. At that point, most of the field drops. Biden might stay in just because there's got to be somebody against Sanders. He may even actually end up winning through a war of attrition if that's assuming that Sanders has a really low ceiling. There could be a strong anti-Bernie backlash. It's just not likely at that point Bernie Sanders becomes the presumptive nominee. Or Biden outperforms which I think, oddly enough, is more likely at this point. And I'm really maybe putting a lot on the line by guessing that, but I think he'll gain more than two states. If Biden is growing, is surging because of South Carolina, you know, you know renewing himself after several humiliating defeats, uh, doing okay with delegates, if the booty judge fans decide largely to back him, and I think there's some reason to believe that that'll happen to some degree, if he outperforms enough, the rest of the field will drop. Warren's out certainly if she loses Massachusetts, and it looks possible. Um, probably out regardless. Klobuchar's being stubborn. She may win her home state of Minnesota, but it's not necessarily going to happen. If either of them lose their home states, they're automatically out. Bloomberg will be in the race. He'll be still spending his massive walls of money for no reason, because he's doing this not for reasons related to winning, I think, at this point. He'll have a handful of delegates, probably, from a small number of states on Super Tuesday. Beyond that, it's Sanders and Biden. And in a war of attrition, I favor Biden to do well enough to lead to a contested convention. That kill This kills the Democratic Party. But basically, Biden doesn't really have a chance at this point unless something weird happens with the polling. And it's true, we have seen some weird shit happen with the polling. But how much of a lead does Sanders have to have in enough places to declare that it's basically insurmountable? He's been ahead by double digits easily in California. Now, of course, California is far, far left. Of course, they're going to vote for someone like Sanders over someone like Biden. It's not a good indicator of the country as a total. It's certainly, that's not a path forward to, to victory in the general, but it's certainly a path forward in the primaries. This is, by the way, exactly why superdelegates exist. They're meant to stop a candidate from coming in promising 51% of people everything that they want and the moon on a stick without bothering to explain to the lower info voters, the Bernie fans mostly, how to pay for these things and running away with the primaries and stealing control of a, a political movement. That's why superdelegates exist. They should do their job and preempt Bernie Sanders. This means they lose 2020, but guess what? You lose anyway. If Sanders is your nominee, socialism is not going to sell in a general election. If Biden is your nominee and you've had to, to rig him in there with the DNC helping, you'll lose half your supporters. He's not going to have any enthusiasm or charisma or anything. He'll lose. And even if you don't, he's geriatric and, and demented. He probably loses anyway. The outside chance of Biden still managing to cobble together enough votes to have a clear path to victory and not have to steal it from Bernie Sanders using superdelegates, that's basically the only real shot left now that Booty Judge is gone. Bloomberg can't do it. Bloomberg will be lucky to have more than 10 delegates after the day's up. Elizabeth Warren will be out at the end of the day, regardless of what happens in Massachusetts. She has no way forward. Warren and Klobuchar don't have a path to victory at this point. I don't know why they're stubbornly clinging to that hope. 
in such a close, potentially contested system, if you want any possibility of the Democrat winning, then you should endorse somebody now, hope that they have a clear mandate, and then back them completely. But instead, the Democrats are each man for himself at the moment, and so schismatic and so violently fanatic about everything that they're not willing to work together. They're ripping each other to shreds. Trump has won every Dem debate. He's won all of the primaries, especially Iowa. You can't honestly tell me that that was a win for anyone on the Democratic side. Sanders loses several additional delegates. Booty Judge doesn't get to make his victory speech. The Democrats look terrible. Trump gains a couple points of approval. <laughs> Just because of Iowa, he's got it made. On Super Tuesday, I expect, th those are basically, there's only two possibilities. Sanders runs away with it. At that point, he's probably the nominee. Or Biden does well enough to force a contested convention at this point. Sanders is still ahead in enough of the states thereafter so that unless Biden really, really wows and gets a really good bump and booty judge endorses, maybe Warren endorses him, he'd have to, basically, you have to assume a situation where everyone else drops out and endorses Biden uh, to stop socialism or something. Okay, then he probably gets it. But, I mean, I don't know if the Democrats can really work together that way. Maybe. I'll give it a 5% chance. It's not impossible. It's just... The way that these people are acting is so petulant and childish, I can't see it. But yes, I expect Biden to pick up more on Super Tuesday than the polls from a few days ago would suggest. Partially because he really did do very well in South Carolina. He does redeem himself, at least in part. Partially because Sanders has begun to falter on the national stage, as far as his polling goes. It looks like he's hit his hard peak. He's kind of on his way down at the moment. That's number two. And then third, Booty Judge's fans... And I'm, I'm going to have to, I wish somebody would conduct, you know, a rational, you know, unskewed poll or something of this. What proportion of Booty Judge's fans are going to back Biden? Because I have a feeling that virtually all of them will choose either Sanders or Biden. Because, I mean, there's no reason for them to vote for Klobuchar. There's no reason for them to vote for Warren, who I think sparred with it, has sparred with everyone, including the Booty Judge fans. If he saw no path to victory, she certainly, if she's seeing anything, it's a hallucination. That's about all. Peace out.